Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Our viewers, wherever you are, this is our prayer hour. As we had said earlier, that we want to pray so that God will help us to endure and overcome the spirit of delay in our lives. And here we are in our studios with our guests. Welcome, men of God. Watu wanguvu. Wako kwenye studio zetu, jioni ya leo, ili tukaweze kuomba pamoja. Ni wakati wa maombi. Kwa hivyo, kuna wengi wenu mulituma maombi yenu mapema na ninajua ya kwamba wenda kuna wengine hauja tuma maombi yako you still have time send your prayer request and we will pr pray along with you tunapoendelea na ibada yetu jioni ya leo kwa hivyo kabla tuende kwa jambo lolote ningependa tuombe maana Yesu Kristo ndiye jawabu la kila ombi na pia ndiye mgeni muheshimiwa mahali hapa. Bila yeye sisi hatuwezi na lazima tumtangulishe mbele ya hoja yako, ya hoja zetu ili akaweze kutupa suluhisho jioni ya leo. Tuamini tuombe. Mtakatifu Baba wa mbinguni, tutoa shukurani mbele zako kwa kutupatia uhai jioni ya leo. Na zaidi ya yote tunakabidhi maisha yetu kwa mikono yako tutumie kwenye studio hisi sisi ni vyombo tu wewe ukaingia ndani mwetu tukatumike kwa ajili ya nguvu zako ili ukafikie wanao jioni ya leo jibu maombi yao pia nasi ukatujibie maombi yetu na tuendapo kuona baba jawabu la kila ombi ambalo tunaweka mbele zako tukufu na sifa sio kwa wanadamu bali ni kwako tunazileta asante ni kwa maana wewe unatangulia mbele ya maombi yetu natangulia mbele ya mafundisho yetu jioni ya leo unatangulia mbele ya kila jambo ambalo tunafanya mali hapa jina lako lisifiwe na limidhiwe kwa Kristo Yesu mwana wa pekee ambaye ndiye wokovu wetu tunaomba na hata kuamini Sema amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tunamshukuru Mungu. Kwa hivyo tuko na furaha sana kwenye studio zetu kusema karibu tena ili tukaweze kuendelea pamoja. Vile tulivyoahidi ya kwamba tutakuwa live saa kumi na moja. Ijapo tumepitisha na dakika kidogo lakini tunajua ya kwamba wewe ulikuwa tayari kupokea kutoka kwa Bwana. Kwa hivyo karibu karibu taketi chini ili tuweze kusikia kutoka kwa Mungu hata kama unasafiri na unatutazama kwa mitandao ya kijamii kwa Facebook yako kuwa msikivu saidi kwa sababu mambo yale ambayo tunaenda kusungumzia hapa tumesema hatutaki kukawia tena katika maisha yetu na wakati ambapo nilihubiri hilo neno Jumapili iliyopita na ile ya chini kabisa nimeona ya kwamba watu wengi wamekuwa na kilio ndio maana tumesema leo wacha tukaweze kuomba kinyume na hiyo roho ya kutuchelewesha katika maisha Daudi anasema ya kwamba nalimtafuta Bwana katika kitabu cha Zaburi 34 na alimtafuta Bwana naye akanisikia na akanikomboa kutokana na uoga wangu maana mambo yale ambayo yanachelewesha maisha yako najua saa zingine unaogopa unachelewa kuolewa inakuwa kwamba ni uoga hautaki kutoka nje hautaki watu wa kuone kwa sababu umri umeenda umechelewa kuolewa wale mlio soma na wao kama leo kuna dada alinitembelea kwa ofisi akasema ya kwamba mchungaji wale nilisoma na wao hata wengine hawakumaliza kama mimi na leo hii wako mbele 
waliolewa wako na watoto na mimi nilisoma na nimekuja kufanya kazi ya cleaning hata wale tuliomaliza na wao wameajiriwa leo hii ni wanajeshi ni watu wakubwa katika serikali na mimi nilipomaliza masomo yangu nilikuja kukaa chini nafanya kazi ya cleaning anaogopa kukutana na wale aliosoma nao anajua si yeye peke yake hata wewe mali ambapo uko kwenda kuna roho ya uoga imewekwa ndani mwako kwa sababu ya jambo fulani kuchelewesha katika maisha limekutia uoga and whenever we wake up every day the bible says do not fear do not be afraid i am with you you reach a time it's like you're asking yourself questions is there a god Mungu yuko. Mungu yuko. Na leo tunakuja kwako na suluhisho. Kwa hivyo sitaki kuingia kwa mambo mengi. Nataka ni wa pishe pia marafiki zangu wala ambao tuko nao mbele zako leo ili wakajitambulisha majina kisha baadaye. Mtumishi wa Mungu atatupatia neno kwa ufupi. Alafu tutaingia kuangalia maombi ya watu vile wametuma na tutayaombea na tunajua ya kwamba ushuhuda uko maana biblia inatuambia kwa ufunuo kwamba walimushinda kwa ushuhuda wa vinywa vyao mbona tukose ushuhuda jamani lazima tutapata ushuhuda na kwa damu ya mwana kondoo amen karibuni sana Hello my name is Harrison Evan Sadea Majina yangu ni Harrison Evan Sadea Nimefurahia sana leo to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit kwa uweponi pa Roho Mtakatifu Na pia kwa mwaliko wa siku hii I want to believe that God is with us Nataka kuamini Mungu yupo pamoja nasi and he's ready to fulfill his word. Na yuko tayari kulitimiliza neno lake. I'm so glad for each and every person who is watching live. Nimependezwa na kufurahia kwa kila mmoja wenu anayetutisama. Because our life and your life will never remain the same again. Maana maisha yako na maisha yako haitasalia sawia tena. Thank you very much. Asante sana. As you continue to tune in. Unapoendelea kuunganika pamoja nasi. Amen. 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 My name is Johnston Nicoshel. I'm blessed to be here with you today live. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we are ready to hear from the word of God. The word of God is life. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. And one thing I do remember about the sword wakati ambapo Solomon alipatana na wale wa mama naamini ya kwamba ilikuwa ni jaribio la kwanza la Solomon kwa hekima ya Solomon alipopatana na wale wa mama wawili waliokuwa wanasema wangu ni aliye hai mwingine anasema wangu sio ule amekufa wangu ni ule aliye hai Solomon alisema give me the sword and that is why before we go on praying for your prayer requests and items we need first of all to ask for the word of god the sword of the spirit the book of ephesians which is the word of god that will help us to understand more about the spirit of delay in our lives hallelujah kwa hivyo karibu mtumishi wa mungu welcome Pastor Harrison lead us in the word of God as the spirit of God will lead you in the few minutes to come. Amen. Thank you very much. Asante sana for this opportunity. Kwa tunuko hii which we have been given by God. Ambao tumetunukiwa na Mungu to speak the word of God today. Linena neno la Mungu leo. Uh, uh, this topic that we are tackling today 
uh, jumbe huu ambao tunashughulikia leo it has been tackled in uh, two segments imeshughulikiwa katika vipengee viwili we are only making a continuation of it tunafanya tu mwendelezo kwayo last week uh, juma lopita Uh, the servant of God tackled so many uh, things concerning the delay in life. Mtumishi wa Mungu Mary Nyokonyo alizungumzia maswala kadhaa kuhusu kuchelewa katika maisha. And uh, we have so many things that make delay to happen in life. Na kunazo vitu vingi zinazosababisha kuchelewa fanyika katika maisha. As a believer, kama muumini You need to understand that delay is going to happen. Unapaswa kufahamu kwamba kuchelewa kwaweza tokea. Every person has uh, uh, either uh, gone through a delay moment. Kila mtu katika hali moja ama nyingine amepitia hali ya kuchelewa. During that time of delay so many people feel so discouraged. Na katika wakati wa vitu kuchelewa wengi huzushika sana. A lot of people are uh, even turn away from faith. Na watu wengi hadi uondoka katika imani. That is the time so many people are being misled. Hiyo ndio wakati watu wengi wanakosa mwelekeo. From the true purpose of God kutokana na kweli na makusudi ya Mungu But those who know their God Lakini kwa wale wa mjuao Mungu wao They understand the power and the ability in their God Wanafahamu nguvu na uweza ulio katika Mungu They will still continue to worship God Wataendelea kumwabudu Mungu They will continue to walk with God Wataendelea kutembea na Mungu They will continue to serve God Wataendelea kumtumikia Mungu Because they understand that in due time that Lord is going to make them come out of that situation. Maana wanafahamu kwamba kwa muda usio mrefu Mungu anaenda kutengeneza njia katika hiyo hali. Last week when the servant of God Mary was speaking about the children of Israel. Na Juma lokuisha wakati mtumishi wa Mungu Mary alikuwa anazungumza kuhusu wana wa Israeli. He spoken of Deuteronomy chapter number 2. Alizungumza kuhusu kumbukumbu la Torati mlango wa pili. When the Lord watched these children of Israel rotating the mountain wakati bwana alikuwa anatisama wana wa Israeli wakizunguka mlima and it got his attention na ikavutia uh, 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 mawazo ya Mungu he said that you have rotated this mountain for so long akasema mume visunguka mlima hizi kwa muda ulio mrefu you need to move mnapaswa kusonga that is why today na ndio sababu leo i want to say nataka kusema that the children of israel were rotating that mountain zunguka ule mlima with a reason na sababu will of god walikuwa wameziacha njia za mungu they disobeyed god in wilderness walikosa kumtii mungu jangwani the delay they were facing kuchelewa ambako walikuwa nako was a result of their disobedience to god ilikuwa ni matokeo ya kutokuwa watifu kwa mungu the, uh, the, the delay that they were facing kuchelewa ambako walikuwa napitia was the result of murmuring and complaining ilikuwa ni matokeo ya kulalamika na manunguniko The delay they were facing kuchelewa ambako walikutanika nako it was a result of them mixing with the idols ilikuwa ni matokeo ya wao kuunganika na miungu and so when we talk about delay hivyo tunaposungumza kuhusu kuchelewa we need to understand so many things tunapaswa kufahamu vitu vilivyo vingi but i'm only going to tackle three for today lakini nakwenda kuvisugulikia tu vitatu kwa leo delay one of the things that can cause it to happen it may be a demonic activity kuchelewa moja wapo ya vitu ambavyo vinaweza changia kuchelewa kwa maisha ni ni ni, ni kazi ya shetani it may be the result of demonic uh, activity inaweza kuwa ni matokeo ya kazi ya kimapepo ama ya kishetani that is the first thing hiyo ni ya kwanza And the second thing is na ya pili ni the result of dispute in the home uh, matokeo ya kutokuwa na amani ama gomfi katika jamii dispute in the home zile 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 magomfi katika jamii and the third thing ya tatu it may just 
be a divine delay so God can demonstrate his power Ina, on your behalf. Inaweza kuwa tu ni kule kuchelewa kwa kiungu ambako Mungu anataka kutibitisha nguvu ama uweza alonao. That is why Na ndio sababu the children of Israel wana wa Israeli when they were walking in wilderness walipokuwa wanatembea jangwani headed to the promised land wakielekea katika nchi ya hadi the Bible says Bible inasema that they were to take few days to enter into the promised land wangelichukua siku chache sana kuingia katika nchi ya hadi but because they disobeyed god lakini kwa sababu ya kutokumtii mungu it took them 40 years ili wagarimu miaka 40 40 years in wilderness miaka 40 jangwani that was not the intention of god hayo hayako mapenzi ya mungu but it was as a result of their disobedience lakini ilikuwa ni matokeo ya kutokuwa na utifu when a believer walks in disobedient to God. Wakati muumini anatembea katika njia za kutokumtii Mungu. It can cause him to delay in some areas of life. Inaweza msababisha kuchelewa katika maeneo ya maisha. It can make him delay in the ach- uh, in achievement of things that he needs to achieve in life. Inaweza sababisha kuchelewa kwa vitu anavyohitaji kuvipata katika maisha. And that is why. Na ndiyo sababu. Before they left the Egypt. Kabla waondoke kutoka Misri God gave them the instruction. Bwana kawapatia maagizo. How they have they are supposed to live. Vile wanapaswa kuishi. How they are going to walk. Vile wanaenda kutembea. The things they were supposed to avoid. Na vitu ambavyo wanapaswa kuvizuia. So today as we share about uh three things. Na leo tunaposhiriki kuhusu masuala haya matatu. I want you to understand. Nataka ufahamu that demonic activity kwamba kazi za kimapepo can cause delay in life inaweza sababisha kuchelewa kwa maisha that is the first thing that i want to tackle hiyo ndio ya kwanza ambayo nataka kulishughulikia first thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse 18 wa deso, waraka wa kwanza wa desoloniko mlango wa pili mstari wa 18 Paul is writing to this man. Paulo anaandika kwa wanaume hawa. And he says, I eagerly wanted to come to see you brethren. Anasema, nalitamani sana kuja kuwaona enyi wapendwa. This has been my longing. Haya yamekuwa ni matamanio yangu. But it has never happened. Lakini bado haijatimia. In sec a first Thessalonians 2:18 he says, wherefore we would have come unto you. Uh, uh, inasema basi tungelikuja kwenu even i paul hata mimi paulo once again mara tena but satan hinders la- hindered us lakini shetani alituzuia it was the will of god yalikuwa ni mapenzi ya mungu paul was convinced paulo akashawishika he knew what he wanted to do alifahamu alichokuwa anahitajika kukifanya was god's will yalikuwa ni mapenzi ya mungu to visit these people watembelea watu hawa At times when you want to do the will of god wakati mwingine ukitaka kufanya mapenzi ya mungu you have discovered that whatever i am doing is the will of god umetambua kuwa chochote ninachokifanya ni mapenzi ya mungu It does not guarantee you that you will not encounter the opposition of delay. Aikupatii sababu ya kusema kwamba huwezi kutanika na roho wa kuchelewa. So Paul knew this. Paulo akafahamu hii. He, he had witnessed this in his heart. Alikuwa ameshuhudia hii katika moyo wake. But Satan raised a lot of and, and several opposition to hinder to stop him from going. Naye shetani akainua vizuizi vilivyo vingi kumzuia kwenda kuwatembelea wapendwa hawa. So it cost that delay hivyo ikasababisha kule kuchelewa delay in going kuchelewa kwa kuenda delay in fulfilling his heart's desire kuchelewa kwa kutimiliza matamanio ya moyo delay in taking the gospel to those people kuchelewa kupeleka injili kwa wale watu daniel was a great prophet of god daniel tunamwona ni nabii mkuu wa mungu the man whom god has used to prophesy Manaume ambaye Mungu amemtumia kutoa nabii. And God showed him about the eschatological things that were to come and happen. Na Bwana akamwonyesha baadhi ya vitu vikuu vitakavyoenda kutukia. But when we read Daniel chapter number 10, lakini tunaposoma Daniel mlango ule wa 10, we discover that Daniel encountered territorial spirit in Persia. Tunakuja kutambua kwamba Daniel alikutanika na zile roho za mipaka pale Persia. The territorial spirit 
that was controlling that area that never wanted prayer to have breakthrough zile roho ambazo zilikuwa zinamiliki yale maeneo ambayo hayakutaka maombi yapate upenyo but when daniel began praying naye daniel alipoanza maombi the lord god of israel was with him bwana mungu wa israeli alikuwa pamoja na yeye he was together with daniel alikuwa pamoja na daniel so when daniel prayed hivyo daniel alipoomba the very day of his prayer siku ile tu ya kwanza ya maombi yake the lord hearken his voice Bwana kasikia sauti yake But there was a lot of resistance Lakini pakawa na ugumu lo mwingi A lot of resistance in that prayer Ugumu mwingi katika maombi yale But Daniel persisted Lakini Danieli akabakia amesistiza He persisted in that prayer for 21 days Aliendelea na maombi yale kwa siku 21 And out of 21 days Na katika zile siku 21 The Lord sent the angel uh, Michael Bwana katuma malaika uh, my, Michael to bring the message to him Alete ujumbe kwake What does that mean Yamanisha nini hii The delay was only temporary Uh, kuchelewa kulikuwa tu kule kwa muda the delay that you are facing today kuchelewa unakopitia leo it is a temporal thing ni kitu cha muda mchache it's not a permanent thing si kitu cha muda ule mrefu so that should not make you feel that you have already lost kwa hivyo hiyo isikufanye kuhisi kama tayari umepotea don't feel like you have already been defeated Usi, usihisi ni kama ni kana kwamba tayari umeshindwa paul and apostle says paulo mtume anasema the things which we are facing today vitu ambavyo tunavipitia leo they are only temporal things that cannot be compared to the eternal ni vitu tu vya muda ule mchache ambavyo haviwezi kulinganishwa na vile vya umilele satan has the tendency of magnifying your problem to think that god has been defeated satani ana mazoea ya kuinua shida yako ili ufikirie kwamba umeshindwa tayari when your problem is magnified wakati shida zako zinainuliwa that is when you fail to know how much you are loved by god hapo ndipo unakosa kufahamu umependwa na mungu kiasi gani the delay in your life does not mean that god hates you kuchelewa kwa maisha yako haimaanishi mungu akuchukia wewe yes it may be the activity of the devil ndio inaweza kuwa ni kazi ya shetani but god has what we call the permissive will lakini mungu yuko na ile ya uruma at times he allows such a situation to happen so that he can manifest his glory wakati mwingine anaruhusu hali ifanyike ili atukuze ajitukuze mwenyewe so paul decided to go and preach hivyo paulo akafanya uamuzi kwenda kuhubiri but he was delayed he was hindered by the devil lakini alicheleweshwa na shetani daniel is praying for 21 days without even having a result danieli anaomba kwa siku 21 bila kuwa na matokeo maybe you are watching and you have prayed so many uh, uh, hours was but La- god has not answered your prayer labda unatutasama katika mitandao hizi na umeomba kwa muda ule mrefu na Mungu hajajibu maombi yako it does not mean that god will not answer your prayer haimaanishi Mungu hatajibu maombi yako god will still answer your prayer bado Mungu atajibu maombi yako continue to pray endelea kuomba continue to persist in the prayer endelea kusisitiza kwenye maombi because god is going to hear your prayer maana mungu anakwenda kusikia maombi yako satan will continue to try hindering the, the faith of the uh, saints satani ataendelea kuzuia imani ya waumini he will cause so many hard, hard, hardship atasababisha magumu yale mengi but the lord will see us through lakini bwana atatutisama Not everything you are facing as delay is demonic activity. Sio kila kitu ambacho unakutana nacho kama kuchelewa ni ya kimapepo. Yes we have demonic activity. Yes tuko na zile kazi za shetani. But not all the things that are happening is a result of demonic. Lakini si vyote vinavyofanyika ni vya kishetani. We need to understand. Tupaswa kufahamu that Demons can only have authority and power over you when you are not functioning right. Kwamba shetani ama 
mapungufu yanaweza tu pata uweza kwako kama tu uene ni sawia na mapenzi ya Mungu. The Bible says Biblia inasema Those who believe in the Son of God wale waaminio kwa mwana wa Mungu they have been given power authority over Satan. Wamepewa nguvu mamlaka zaidi ya shetani. And that is why when Jeremiah also knew this. Na ndio sababu naye nabii Jeremiah alipotambua hii. The Lord told him I've given you power to uproot. Bwana akamwambia nimekupa nguvu za kungoa. To destroy kuharibu and to plant nda kupanda Matthew in his wisdom when recording the statements of Jesus Matayo katika bushara yake alipokuwa na nakili maneno ya Yesu he said alisema everything that was not planted by God is going to be uprooted kwamba kila kitu ambacho hakijapandwa na Mungu kinaenda ngolewa so that seed of evil in your life kwa hivyo hilo pando la kiofu ndani yako that sickness that you are facing today ayo magonjwa cha unayopitia leo that delay that may be in your life uko kuchelewa mbako kupo katika maisha yako lord is able to turn it round bwana una uweza ya kubadili that the people may see his glory ili watu waweze ona utukufu wake that is demonic activity hiyo ni kazi ya kimapepo so when demonic activity is taking place na wakati kazi ya kimapepo iko katika uh, ushukani it tries to bring delay in our life inajaribu kuleta kuchelewa kwa maisha yetu. Satan tries to make things to delay so that we feel to be weary. Shetani anajaribu kufanya vitu kuchelewa ili nasi tukachoke. But I want to assure you today. Kinataka ni kuhakikishie leo. It is not over. Haijakwisha. Because God is on your side. Maana Mungu yuko upande wako. He is going to give you ability to come out of that condition. Na anaenda kukupatia uweza wa kutoka katika hiyo hali. Second thing that I said la pili nilosema is delay can be result of dispute in the home kwamba kuchelewa kunaweza kuwa ni matokeo ya magomfi katika jamii so dispute within the home can cause delay magomfi katika jamii zetu yaweza sababisha kuchelewa first peter chapter number 3 and verse 7 petero wa kwanza mlango wa tatu msari wa saba he says anasema likewise kama vile you husbands Enyi waume dwell with them according to knowledge akaeni nao kat, kulingana na uh, maarifa giving honor unto the wives mkipeana heshima kwa wake zenu as unto the weaker vessel kama vyombo vilivyo daifu and as being heirs together of grace of life na mkiwa pamoja katika neema ya maisha that your prayers be not hindered ili maombi yenu yasije cheleweshwa as a person who is married kama mtu uliyeolea uh, uliyeoa ama kuoleka you need to understand this au unapaswa kufahamu hii sometimes delay can be caused according to the relationship you have in your marriage wakati mwingine kuchelewa kunaweza sababishwa kulingana na Uh, kulingana na maisha unayoishi katika ndoa yako when we read this chapter of peter tunaposoma mstari huu wa petero from the very beginning of verse one, tangia katika mstari wa kwanza he talks about the way the women should appear Uh, anasungumzia kuhusu namna wanawake wanaweza kukaa the way they should have relationship with their husband even if they are not born again vile wanapaswa kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na waume wao hata kama hawajaokoka he gives an example of the life of sarah with abraham anapeana mfano wa sarai na abraham and he wants these people to know na anataka watu hao wajue that when they live in harmony kwamba wanapoishi kwa amani love one another wakimpenda moja kwa mwingine wakiheshimu moja kwa mwingine they are going to have breakthrough in their prayers wanaenda kupata upenyo katika maombi yao i see people leaving their house to go and fast naona watu wakiondoka katika miji zao wakienda kwenye maombi ya kufunga some even may spend a lot of time seeking and uh, 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 praying in the presence of god wengine wanachukua muda wao ulio mrefu wakitafuta na wakiomba mapenzi ya mungu 
since they don't talk in ho, uh, in their houses lakini kwa ukweli hawa hawana mawasiliano katika nyumba zao some of them are not having good relationship they have quarreled they o, have wrangles wa, wengine wao hawana uhusiano mzuri wamegompana wako na tofauti some of them have developed anger and revenge wengine wameleta ile hali ya hasira na kulipisha kisasi they are all children of god wote ni wana wa mungu but the enemy can use that to bring hindrance to your prayer. Lakini shetani aweza tumia hicho kulete kuchelewa kwa maisha yako. That is why Paul is saying that your prayers be not hindered. Na ndio sababu mtume um, mtume um, anasema kwamba maombi yako yasije cheleweshwa. So when a man mistreats his wife in the house. Wakati mwanaume anamtumia vibaya mke wake kwa nyumba. It hinders his prayer before the Lord. Ana inazuia maombi yake kwa nyumba kwa Bwana. When he fails to honor the wife whom the Lord has given to him as a woman. Anapokosa kumheshimu mwanamke ambaye Bwana amempatia kama mke wa nyumba. It brings hindrance to his prayer. Inaleta kizuizi kwa maombi yake. The same to the wife. Kama hivyo hivyo naye mwanamke. And that is why Paul is saying na ndiyo sababu Paulo anasema dwell with them according to knowledge. Haeni na wao kulingana na akili. And so that word knowledge means you need to learn this every day. Na hivyo hilo neno akili inamaanisha unapaswa kujifunza hii kila siku. And so this is a delay. Na hivyo hii ni kuchelewa. A dispute has come into the family. Tofauti ama magomfi yameingia kwa jamii. And we fail to handle it. Na tunakosa kulishughulikia. Every person thinks that I should not even say sorry. Ah, uh, kila mtu anafikiria sasa hapana haja kusema samahani. You think you are right and your partner is wrong. Unafikiria wewe uko sawa na mwenzako ama mke wako ama mume wako ndio mwenye makosa. Paul is saying Ula nasema that that can hinder your prayer. Kwamba hiyo yaweza chelewesha maombi yako. And a lot of people their prayers has been hindered. Na watu wengi maombi yao yamezuiliwa. Not because they have not prayed. Si kwa sababu hawajaomba. But because they have never forgiven their husbands. Lakini kwa sababu tu hawajawahi samehe waume zao. They have never forgiven, forgiven their wives. Hawajawahi samehe wake zao. Sometimes they have never been talking. Wakati mwingine labda hawajakuwa na mawasiliano. That has hindered your prayer hiyo imezuia maombi yako to unlock that prayer lakini kufungua maombi hayo you need to let it go unahitaji kuiachilia iondoke have the forgiveness inside you upate roho ya msamaha ndani yako and allow god to cleanse and wash you again na urusho mungu akuoshe tena when paul was speaking about this na wakati paul alikuwa anazungumza kuhusu hii he said be ye angry na anasema enyi mweni wenye hasira wenye njaa it is nature angry ha wenye hasira but Lakini, do not commit sin msiwe wa kutenda dhambi and sin not na msitende dhambi let uh, not the sun go down upon your wrath basi jua lisije likatua katika hasira ama katika ghadhabu zake neither give place to the devil wala kupeana nafasi kwa shetani it is the nature we have emotions in us ni asilia tuko na hisia ndani mwetu sometimes somebody can say something that offends you wakati mwingine mtu aweza sema kitu ambacho kinaweza kukukwasa some things uh, some things will come that offends you na vitu vingine vinavyoweza kuja na vikukwase if anger is not dealt with quickly kama hasira haitashughulikiwa kwa haraka it will fester and become worse ita zidi na ikuje ikuwe zaidi and it will bring bitterness inside you. na italeta machungu ndani yako that hinders prayer na hiyo inazuia maombi it can cause delay inaweza sababisha kuchelewa so disputes in our families kwa hivyo tofauti katika jamii zetu can bring delay in prayer inaweza lete kuchelewa katika maombi and then i said again na pia tena nilisema we have what we call a delay divine delay tu, ko, na kule kuchelewa kwa kiungu divine delay kuchelewa kule kwa kiungu this divine delay is what happened to the life of lazarus e, 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 kuchelewa ya kiungu ndio ilifanyika kwa maisha ya lazarus lazarus was a friend of jesus lazarus alikuwa rafiki wa yesu and jesus loved him so much na yesu akawa amempenda sana but what happened lakini nini kilifanyika lazarus was sick 
to the point of dying. So when the sister looked at him and saw that this man is going to die, they knew that Jesus was able to heal him. But Jesus that very day, he was not near. He was so busy with the ministry healing people and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And when they came to him and said, your friend Lazarus is very sick and is dying. Na walipokuja kwake wakasema rafiki wako wa dhati Lazaro ni mgonjwa zaidi na katika kiwango cha kufa. Jesus never stopped the ministry to go and heal Lazarus. Yesu hakuacha huduma na aende kumponya Lazaro. He delayed until Lazarus died. Alichelewa kiwango kile cha Lazaro kufa kwanza. And so they decided to bury Lazarus. Hivyo wakafanya uamuzi wa kumzika Lazaro. So what happened? Kwa hivyo nini lifanyika? Jesus went there after the burial. Yesu akaenda pale baada ya maziko. And so he asked. Na hivyo akauliza. Where is Lazarus? Wapi Lazaro? I think so many people thought like this man is crazy. Nafikiri watu wengi walimwangalia mwanaume huyu akafikiria huyu mwanaume ni kama akili imeenda imepungua kidogo. He's talking about the impossibility. A man has died and we have already buried him. Anasumuza vitu ambavyo tayari haviwezekani. Mwanaume amekufa tumekwishamzika. Now what is he asking? Sasa nini anauliza? He would not have even come here. Hata angelikuja hapa. Because he has failed us. Maana ametu ametufanya ame sisi kushindwa. So many people think that God has failed them. Watu wengi sana wanafikiria Mungu amewafanya kushindwa. They think that God has forsaken them. Wanafikiria Mungu but God wants to demonstrate his power lakini Mungu anataka kudhihirisha nguvu zake over our impossibility kwa vitu ambavyo sisi tunaona haviwezekani it was impossible for a man to die and then come back to life ilikuwa ni ngumu sana mwanaume kufa na kurejelea katika uhai tena and that was not a coma na hiyo haikuwa ni coma a coma Kuzimia, kuzimia, but it was the real death lakini ilikuwa ni kifo cha kweli god wants to demonstrate his power through your impossibility mungu anataka kudhihirisha nguvu zake kwa vyako ambavyo haviwezekani and i pray that every impossibility in your life na ninaomba kwamba chochote ambacho hakiwezekani kwa maisha yako may the lord turn it around and make it to become possible wacha bwana afanye mageuzi na ifanye kuwezekana everything that is dead in your life kila kitu ambacho kimekufa kwa maisha yako everything that you have lost as Martha and Mary lost uh, uh, their brother uh, kila kitu ambacho umepoteza kama vile Martha na, 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 na Maria walipo, wali, walipoteza ndugu yao may the lord bring it back to you wacha bwana arejeshe kwako Lazarus was brought back to life again Lazarus akarejeshwa kwa uhai tena he was brought back to their family again alirejeshwa kwa familia tena the sister thought they have lost him dadake alijua kwa it is over now. Sasa. When you see it is over in your life. Unapoona imekwisha kwa maisha yako. That is the beginning of God to do great things again in your life. Hiyo ndio mwanzo wa Mungu kuanza kufanya mapya tena kwa maisha yako. The God who calls the things which are not seen to be seen. Ah Mungu anayeita vitu ambavyo havionekani vinakuja kuonekana. He called Lazarus Lazarus was in the tomb. Alimuita Lazarus Lazaro Lazaro akiwa kaburini and Lazarus came into life again. Na Lazaro karejelea katika uhai wake tena. May every miracle that is dead in your life resurrect again. Wacha na kila muujiza uliokufa kwa maisha yako ufufuke tena. May everything that was lost to be brought back again. Wacha na kila kitu kilichopotea kirejeshwe kwa uhai tena. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Jesus wanted to demonstrate his power over death. Yesu alitaka kudhihirisha nguvu zake uh, juu ya kifo. That delay was there so that he can demonstrate his power over death. Kule kuchelewa kulitokea pale ili Mungu adhihirishe nguvu zake kwa kifo. He proved that he is the resurrection. Alithibitisha kwamba yeye ndiye ufufuo. And he is the life. Na yeye ndiye uzima. When he conquered the death. Aliposhinda kifo hell was shocked 
basi kusimu ilibaki kwa mshangao and that is what he's going to do today na hiyo ndiye anaenda kufanya leo no matter the condition you are facing haijalishi hali unayopitia it doesn't matter how long it has taken haijalishi imechukua muda ulo upi but the bible says lakini bila nasema when jesus came into the vicinity yesu ali wafikilia alipowaonekania when he came inside that family again alipofika katika ile jamii tena he wiped away that cry alipanguza yale machozi he wiped away the tears they had cried alipanguza machozi walolia how long have you been crying umelia kwa muda ulio upi wewe how long have you been Uh, 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 containing that uh, pain in your life umekuwa na yale machungu kwa maisha yako kwa muda ulo upi when he comes inside your family anapoingia katika jamii yako inside your life na ndani ya maisha yako things must change vitu lazima vibadilike he is a god yeye ni mungu who changes not anaye asiyebadilika the bible says wherever he went he did good biblia nasema popote alikoenda alitenda mema and so divine delay kwa hivyo kule kuchelewa kwa kiungu came upon these people ili fikilia watu hawa what is what that divine delay does basi kule kuchelewa kwa kiungu kunafanya nini so that he can build their faith in him ili wakaweze kujenga imani yao kwake god is allowing some things so that he can establish your faith mungu anaruhusu vitu vingine kufanyika ili atibit afanye imani yako iwe tabiti when that problem ends wakati hiyo shida inafika mwisho your faith will never remain the same again imani yako haitasalia sawia tena god is using that just to strengthen your faith bana anatumia hiyo kuitia nguvu imani yako to make you strong akufanye kuwa mwenye nguvu so that you can be able to conquer the battle ahead of you ili ukaweze kushinda vita vilivyoko mbele yako another thing that he wanted to do through this divine kitu kingine alicho taka kufanya kupitia katika huu uh, 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 i, katika hii hali ya kuchelewa ya kiungu divine delay uh, kuchelewa kwa kiungu is used by god to bring glory and honor to his name inatumika na mungu kuleta utukufu na heshima kwa jina lake when those things are going to happen wakati hizo vitu zinaweza kwenda kufanyika the people are going to see the glory of your god watu wanaenda kuona utukufu wa mungu wako they are going to experience the glory of god wanaenda kutanika na nguvu ama utukufu wa mungu wako who are you when you are facing delay wewe ni nani unapokutanika na kuchelewa when you are encountering this delay unapokutanika na huku kuchelewa God is working it out. Bana anaishughulikia. He has taken his time. Amechukua muda wake to make you kukufanya wewe to have you kuwa na wewe so that you can learn the things you never learned. Ili ukajifunze vitu ambavyo haukwa umejifunza wewe. So when you are facing delay kwa hivyo unapopitia kuchelewa in your life katika maisha yako remember that you are greatly loved. Kumbuka kwamba umependwa pakubwa. You are loved by God. Umependwa na Mungu. You are loved by God. Umependwa na Mungu. Don't think that God has forsaken you. Usije kuwa nafikiria kwamba Mungu amekusahau. He loves you so much. Amekupenda sana. And that is why. Na ndiyo sababu he will never let you down. Hata kuachilia. And he will never forsake you. Na hata kusahau. He is going to be with you. Anakwenda kuwa pamoja nawe. When I finish, I want to finish by saying this. Nataka kumaliza kwa kusema hii. That David, a man of God. Kwamba Daudi, a uh, mtu wa Mungu. In Psalms chapter number 8. Katika Azaburi mlango wa 8, verse 4 to 6. Msari wa 4 hadi ule wa 6. He says, "What is man?" Uh, inasema basi mwanaume ni nani? That thou art mindful of him ambaye yuko katika mawazo ya Mungu We are in the mind of God He thinks about us Anafikiria kutuhusu about us anapanga kutuhusu we are his workmanship sisi ni watendakazi pamoja naye created in him for the good work tumeumbwa na yeye kwa kazi iliyo njema and david acknowledged this na daudi akatambua hii and he said what is a man anasema na mwanaume ni nani that thou art mindful of him aliyetu katika mawazo yake and the son of man na mwana wa mungu that thou visited him ambaye alimtembelea god's visit Mtembe 
Ewa Mungu nakuja. He's going to visit you in a divine way. Anaenda kukutembelea katika njia ya kiungu. When divine delay happens. Wakati kule kuchelewa kwa kiungu unafanyika. God is in the process of releasing greater things in your life. Mungu yuko ushukani kuachilia vitu vikubwa kwa maisha yako. God is in the process of magnifying himself in your life. Bwana yuko katika hatua za kujitukusha mwenyewe kwa maisha yako. David says Daudi anasema we are in the mind of God. Tupo katika mawazo ya Mungu. And he, he is a God who visits us. Na ni Mungu yeye anayetutembelea. When he visited Abraham after the life of barrenness. Alipotembelea Abraham baada ya kisasi kile cha utasa. His life never remained the same. Maisha yake hayakusalia sawia. Told Abraham next year. Akamwambia Abraham, Abraham tisama mwaka unaokuja. The Lord is going to answer your prayer. Bana nakwenda kujibu maombi yako. And wipe your tears. Na kupanguza machosi yako. And for sure. Na kwa kweli. Sarah conceived and gave birth to a son. Sarai akapokea mimba na kamzaa mwana. The Lord visited Abraham. Bwana alimtembelea Abraham. Divine delay. Kule kuchelewa kwa kiungu. So when we talk about delay. Hivyo tunapozungumza kuhusu kuchelewa. You need to understand. Unapaswa kufahamu that it is not a denial from God. Kwamba si kukataliwa kutoka kwa Mungu. He is still thinking of you. Bado anakufikiria. He has good plans for you. Ana mipango mizuri kwako. He loves you so much. Anakupenda sana. He never created you and saved you to see you suffering. Hakukuumba na kuone tu unateseka. But he wants to see you a success. Anaku, anatamani kukuona ukifaulu. That is why tonight. Na ndio sababu Uh, ya leo. The Lord is sending the hand of comfort. Bwana anatuma mkono wa kukufariji. To deliver you. Kukukomboa. To set you free. Kuweke huru. To give you the answer of your heart. Akupe jawabu la moyo wako. So that the people can know you are God. Ili watu wakamfahamu Mungu wako. Thank you very much. Asante sana. For listening. Kwa kutusikiza. And having opportunity just to sit down and listen to this message. Na kwa kupata tatu fursa ya kuketi chini na kusikiza ujumbe huu Your life will never be the same again Maisha yako hayatasalia sawia tena God bless you so much Bwana kubariki sana As I take it back to Pastor Mary Naporejesha kwa mchungaji Maria to Take it from there Achukulie tangia pale Amen 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 to God be the glory for that wonderful message We give God all the honor Amen So I believe my viewer wherever you are You are so blessed. You are so blessed. Here again we come with the topic of delay. As last week we went over it and again we have come on it and we thank God because I know that you are so blessed wherever you are. You are so blessed. I am blessed in the name of Jesus. And I can see many people are responding here and saying no more delay no more delay hallelujah no more delay again in our lives no more delay even in your life no more delay praise the lord thank you man of god because we thought delay comes because god hates us we are not loved but now we have come to understand that it's through the love of God we are still there though we have delayed to buy cars to build houses to have children to have marriage but thank you God because delay is not denial you have not denied us the access to receive the blessings you have for us so i thank you so much because i know that you are blessed continue sending your comments we are still here this is the hour of prayer we want to pray we want to pray and believe god that that request today we are marching out with a verdict of victory favor from the courts of heaven Satan has not won it. He was defeated since the beginning of the creation. And here today, 
Though you have delayed for a little while, I am here to tell you it is not over. We are breaking the camp. We are going to our canon. I know many years, many times we have sung that we are going to canon. We are going to canon. And you wake up every day saying, why is it that I have not reached my canon? Today I'm here to tell you we are breaking the camp. We are breaking our tents. We are moving forward. We are marching forward. Hallelujah. Tell your penina, today I am making a new story. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody near you that today I am breaking through. Praise the Lord. We are breaking through. No more delay in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God. We bless the Lord. Wherever you are, I know we are together. We are together in this journey. Usikubaliane na watu wanasema ya kwamba we ulisahaulika. Hakuna kusahaulika. Hakuna kuachua. Hakuna kubaki nyuma. Ni upendo wa Yesu unatufikisha mahali ambapo tuko. Mbona Yesu asifiwe? Haleluya. Naona maombi ya watu wengi kabisa kuanzia jana tuliposema ya kwamba tutakuwa na an hour of prayer against the spirit of delay. Watu wengi sana waliweza kutuma maombi yao ya kwamba tukasimame nao katika maombi na ninashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu maana najua ya kwamba haya maombi nimekuwa nikiyaombea kuanzia asubuhi na kufikia sasa ninajua kwamba Mungu amejibu maombi yako Bwana Yesu apewe sifa breakthrough over breakthrough praise the lord we are breaking through hiyo biashara ambayo unataka kuanza Nasema kuna mtoto ambaye hasungumzi vizuri leo ataanza kuongea. Maana Mungu anasema katika kitabu cha Jeremiah kwamba mimi ni Mungu wa wote wenye mwili. Je, kuna jambo ngumu na mimi? Mungu anatuuliza swali jamani. Na Mungu anapouliza ako na uhakikisho kwake ya kwamba hakuna jambo ngumu. Kama vile alivyouliza mtumishi wa Mungu Ezekiel, akamwambia je, mifupa hii yaweza ishi? Ezekiel alijua kwamba naweza jibu na nikosee kwa jibu langu maana mimi ni mwanadamu sina uhakika kama hii mifupa ambayo imenyauka kabisa inaweza ishi lakini naye simama mbele zake anayeniuliza haya yeye ndiye muumba anajua mwanzo wa mwanadamu wenda alipoanza kuumba hakuumba mfupa uliokuwa na nyama kwa hivyo anajua ile style alitumia kumuumba mwanadamu. Mimi ni nani niseme baba hizi mifupa haziezi ishi maana zimenyauka na zimekauka kabisa. Ezekiel akamwambia Mungu wewe unajua. Na hata na sisi leo tumekuja ili tukaweze kukanusha maneno yale ambayo adui amekuwa akikusungumzia kwenye sikio lako ya kwamba wewe umekawia wakati wako wa ndoo umeisha kwani haujawahi sikia watu wanaolewa hata wakiwa wamepita menopause si wewe wa kwanza bwana yesu asifiwe haujawahi sikia watu wamezaa wakiwa wamepitisha wamefika 45 years hata wacha ya sara maana unaweza ambiwa ya sara ni hizo ni samani za kale hata saa hizi bado mungu anatenda ile miujiza aliyotenda wakati wa abrahamu bado anatenda mpaka leo Tunaona watu wanazaa wakiwa wamepitisha hata miaka na tano na sita hamsini wanapata watoto. You are not exceptional. Praise the Lord. You are still in the plan of God. Na Mungu akitaka kujitukuza kwako. Kama vile alivyojitukuza kwa mauti ya Lazaro. Mwambie Bwana niko hapa jitukuze. Patie Bwana nafasi. Mwambie niko hapa jitukuze kwangu jitukuze yule mwanaume aliyeishi katika birika la bedsaida sio kwamba hakuwa na msaidisi wa kumsaidia Mungu alimchelewesha na sababu maana wakati mwingine tunategemea wanadamu tunasema ya kwamba natamani mtu anibebe niwe wa kwanza nani amekwambia utasaidiwa na mwanadamu Mungu anataka ashuke mwenyewe 
vile Yesu alivyoshuka mwenyewe na akamwambia jitwike godoro lako maana hali yako si sawa na hali ya mwingine ya huyo mwingine ilikuwa ni lazima apitie ndani ya yale maji lakini yako ni ya kunenewa tu Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tumekuwa watu wa kukopi paste mitindo za watu ya kwamba huyu alipokea uponyaji kupitia chombo hiki cha unabii. Hata na mimi lazima nipitie hapo. Nani alikwambia? Yako unahitaji neno la Mungu likusimamishe. Praise the Lord. Today we have come to you with the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Arise, shine for your glory has come. Let men and women come for your light. Allow God to glorify himself in you. It is your time my sister. It is your time my brother. That barrenness is not meant to kill you, but it is meant to vomit you to your destiny, to your glory. Whatever you are passing through, I know, I'm perceived in my heart that it's not meant to destroy you. It is meant to vomit you to your destiny. It's meant to lift you. It is meant to make you like a golden serpent. That men will look unto you and say, If this lady is saved, who am I that God cannot save? Praise the Lord. As Jesus was lifted as a, like a golden serpent, the Bible says, We as Jesus... We are also lifted as a living stones. It is not yet over. It is not over with you my sister. Haijaisha na wewe. Kwa hivyo nataka tuingie katika hali ya maombi ili tukaweze kuombea hoja zetu. Nilikuwa naangalia simu yangu kidogo ilikuwa na hitilafu singeweza kuyafikia comments za watu lakini nashukuru Mungu ya kwamba imerudi kwa hivyo naona watu wanazidi kutuma comments zao it's not over it's not over bado tuko katika hour of prayer no more delay in your life hallelujah and if you're watching with us i thank god because of you because this hour is meant for your blessings. Kwa hivyo hapa niko na maombi ama mahitaji ya watu ni watu wengi lakini tutasoma machache. Maana wengi zilikuwa ni repetitions kama ni marriage unapata watu kama watano kumi wameandika wanasema marriage. So we are combining them together ili tukaweze kuyaombea jioni ya leo na pia kupata encouragement kidogo jioni ya leo kwa sababu ya hizo shida. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Haleluya, haleluya. Redemptor unasema ya kwamba unaomba for financial breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Unataka upenyo wa kifedha. Praise the Lord. Na ningependa ya kwamba tunaenda kusungumzia kidogo kuhusu upenyo wa kifedha. Maana ni vizuri tunene ukweli. Wakati moja nilikuwa na mtumishi wa Mungu mmoja na akanipatia ufahamu kidogo kwa breakthrough financially. Ya kwamba ukitaka pesa toa pesa. Na hiyo ndiyo mtindo ambao wengi wa watumishi wa Mungu kwa sababu wanajua watu wanataka financial breakthrough wamekuwa wakitumia na kusema toa ili uweze kubarikiwa it is true toa pesa upate pe pesa na nataka ni kuambia ya kwamba na mtumishi wa Mungu pia atasungumzia kidogo sio pesa zako zinakupatia pesa ama sio pesa zako zinakupatia ukombozi ule ambao unahitaji katika maisha we are delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ pesa yako ni sadaka yako ile ambayo unasimama nayo tu mbele za Mungu kumekuwa na lawama sana watu wanalaumu na kusema oh siku hizi waombaji ukienda kwao lazima utoe mtumishi unaambiwa toa hii unaambiwa toa hii unaambiwa toa hii mpaka dada mwingine akaniuliza kwani Kenya imekuwa ni soko ya watu kutoa ndipo posa wabarikiwe. What do we do servant of God? For us to break through in finance. Maana watu wametoa 
mpaka wamechoka kutoa. Watu wametoa na hawaoni baraka kwa sababu akili yao ni ya kwamba nikitoa hiki nitapata hiki. It's like you are bribing God. Na Biblia inasema God is not mocked. What a man gives, so shall he receive. Dada anaomba anataka breakthrough financially. Your advice to her. Welcome. Okay, my advice to my sister. Shauri langu kwa dada wetu. Most of the people have been told to give money so that they can get money. Watu wengi sana redemptor mwambie watoa pesa ili wapate pesa. But money is not the solution to your problem. Lakini pesa si suluhu ya shida yako. Money is one uh, one way of worshiping god pesa ni njia moja ya kumwabudu mungu we have several things that takes place as uh, in the service kuna vitu vingi ambavyo vina pata nafasi katika ibada and so uh, when we worship god with our money hivyo tunapomwabudu mungu na pesa zetu is an indication of showing that we love you uh, we love you god with what you have given unto uh, to us uh, ni ishara ya kumuonyesha mungu kwamba mungu tunakupenda na vile ambavyo umetupatia in old testament katika agano la kale they were known through the physical blessings azilifahamika katika matoleo ya kawaida so most of the people were blessed physically watu wengi walibarikiwa tu kwa mwili but paul when speaking to the church lakini naye paulo anapokuja kusungumza kwa kanisa tells them blessed be the god and the father of our lord jesus christ anasema abarikiwe libarikiwe jina la bwana uh, wetu Yesu Kristo the father of our lord jesus christ uh, baba wa yesu kristo who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings ambaye ametubariki na baraka zote za rohoni so when a person is not having money uh, ivo mtu anapokosa kuwa na pesa he does not mean he's poor haimaanishi yeye sasa ni maskini in the book of revelation katika kitabu cha ufunuo the bible says bila nasema that you have a plenty of things kwamba uko na vitu kwa utele but you are poor in, uh, in the eyes of god lakini wewe ni maskini kwa macho ya mungu so what i can tell my sister is uh, kile ninachoweza kukwambia dadangu ni god is going to give you the breakthrough of finance bwana anaenda kukupatia upenyo wa kifedha as an indication that he loves you kama ishara ya kuwa unapendwa and he's going to meet your need na anaenda kutanika na haja zako in life we need money kwa maisha tuahitaji pesa so that we can buy basic things ili tukanunue vitu hitajika god is capable of doing all these things mungu ana uwezo wa kufanya vitu hivi vyote in the right way katika njia iliyo sawa but when you are you are told you need to do this and this and this that is now applying works to the uh, to the grace uh, unapoambiwa sasa unahitaji kufanya hili na hili basi sasa hiyo unakuja kuweka matendo katika neema whatever you give out of your heart bet be it small or big it is touching god a uh, chochote ambacho unapeana uh, mbele za bwana iwe dogo ama 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 kubwa na uwe umepeana kwa moyo wako inamguza Mungu. And so my sister God is able to change that situation. Ivo dadangu Mungu ana uwezo wa kubadilisha hiyo hali. He's going to release the breakthrough of finance in Anaenda Jesus name. Anaenda kuachilia neema ama upenyo wa kifedha kwa maisha yako kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. 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 Thank you man of God. Naamini ya kwamba dada yangu umeelewa na breakthrough ya kifedha inakuja kwako katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Maana baba Mungu ndiye ambaye ametubariki na baraka zote za rohoni. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na pia ukaambiwa ya kwamba wakati ambapo unabarikiwa usimusahau Mungu. Maana ni yeye amekupatia nguvu za kufanyika tajiri. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ndio hivyo maana yake wakati mwingine tunaomba tunakosa kwa sababu gani? Maana unaomba kwa matamanio yako mwenyewe. Sio matamanio yanayomtukuza Mungu. Unaomba kwa matamanio yako mwenyewe. Kwa hivyo leo ninajua kwamba hii breakthrough ya kifedha ambayo unahitaji, unataka ili kapate kufanya nini kumtukuza Mungu. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo, tuko na dada anayeomba anasema ya kwamba muniombe kwa sababu ya uzao the fruit of the womb Mungu anaweza hakuna jambo linalomshinda Mungu alimpatia hana mtoto alimpatia Sara mtoto 
akiwa amepitisha miaka za kuzaa lakini Mungu alikuwa na uwezo wa kumpatia vile tu mtumishi wa Mungu amesema ya kwamba kuna delay ambayo huwa inafanyika kwa sababu Mungu anataka kujitukuza inaitwa divine delay katika maisha yako haujacheleweshwa kwa sababu ya kukejeliwa ama kuchekelewa umechelewesha maana Mungu anataka kile kitakachotoka kwako ni chake kama vile hana alivyotambua kwamba Samueli hakukuwa wake alikuwa wa Mungu na akafanya agano na Mungu kwamba Mungu utakaponipatia atakuwa Muisraeli kamili atakuwa mnazareti ambaye wembe haitapita kwa kichwa chake na maisha yake yote ataishi katika nyumba yako na Mungu akafurahi kwa hivyo uenda kuna nadhiri nyingi zile ambazo umefanya mbele za Mungu unajua sisi ni wanadamu leo unafanya hii nadhiri kesho unabadilisha unafanya ingine kesho hiyo ingine unaona sijajaribu unafanya hiyo ingine ama umekuwa ukizunguka kwa waombaji ya kwamba nataka mtoto nataka mtoto manabii wamekutabiria kweli ya kwamba wewe si tasa Mungu ako na sababu kwa hivyo uko na kila sababu ya kungojea na pia unapongojea Tunataka pia kusikia katika mtumi, kutoka kwa mtumishi wa Mungu Pastor Harrison ya kwamba unapongojea kuna kule kukejeliwa mtumishi. Vile Hana Penina alimfanyia Hana. Alimkejeli. Na hakukejeli ana wakati walikuwa nyumbani sana sana. Wakati mwingi Biblia inasema walipokuwa wameenda Shilo. Walipokuwa wameketi pale Shilo katika mahali pa maabudu, mahali patakatifu. Kwa hivyo umekuwa ukienda kanisani watu wanasema wewe unaomba kila siku si hata afadhali ungechukua nafasi uende kwa mganga ama uende kwa mtu ambaye anaweza kukusaidia madawa za kienyeji zikuoshe tumbo umekejeliwa kwa mambo mengi ya kwamba unajifanya hapa na maombi kila wakati dada naomba anataka Mungu amsaidie ili akapate fruit of the womb na najua kwamba labda amekaa miaka mingi bila kupokea nena jambo mtumishi kwa ajili yake Uh, most of the time when people are facing such a like situation uh, wakati mwingi sana watu wanapopitia hali kama na hizo they are given a lot of advices wanapewa mashauri yaliyo mengi they try to do a lot of things so that they can uh, 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 conceive eh, wanajaribu kufanya vitu vingi ili wapate ujauzito but it is only god who is able to make it happen lakini ni mungu tu ndiye ana uweza wa kuifanya itimie the children does not come from a man watoto hawatoki kwa mwanaume from a woman hazi hawatoki kwa mwanamke they come from god zinatoka kwa mungu I have a friend who got married niko na rafiki aliyepata kuoleka and they lived eight years na wakaishi miaka minane without having a child bila mtoto so the, the, the parents tried to uh, uh, interfere with the marriage kwa hivyo wazazi wakajaribu kuharibiana na ile ndoa by bringing in people with medicine kwa kuwaleta watu na madawa they went to uganda for witchcraft wakaenda uganda kwa uchawi so that the wife can uh, conceive ili mke wa huyu rafiki wake aweze kupata ujauzito but it never happened lakini haku haikufanyika but the lord god himself came lakini bwana mungu mwenyewe akaja at the appointed time kwa wakati ulioteuliwa and this woman conceived na mke akapata ujauzito Today, this man has three children leo huyu mwanaume ako na watoto watatu something that the people told him it will never happen watu uh, kitu ambacho watu walijua haitatimia your destiny is in the hands of god hatima yako ipo mikononi pa mungu when god created you wakati Mungu alikuumba he had a purpose alikuwa na makusudi and everything in your life is designed by god na kila kitu kwa maisha yako imepangiwa na Mungu remain faithful to your husband salia mwaminifu kwa mume wako believe in god mwaminie Mungu and tell god you said you, ca- you you cannot create somebody and make her barren na umwambie Mungu ulisema hautamuumba mtu na kumfanya tasa so i am asking you through that promise that you remember Ivo na kuuliza kwa hiyo ahadi kuwa Mungu nikumbuke and that his own appointed time is going to 
give you a child. Na Mungu kwa wakati wake ulioboro atakupatia mtoto. At any time you try to to do like Abraham did. Na wakati wote utajaribu kufanya kama vile Abraham alifanya. And gave birth to Ishmael. Na akapata mtoto Ismaili. That is human solution. Hiyo ni suluhu ya wanadamu. Finally Ishmael never gave Abraham peace. Uh, atimaye Ismaili mtoto wa Abraham hakumpatia babake Abraham amani. When Abraham went to God and told God now this is the child of promise he said no that is not the child of promise. Wakati Abraham alienda kwa Mungu sasa akamwambia Mungu huyu ndi mwana wa ahadi. Mungu akamwambia pana huyu si mwana wa ahadi. The child of promise is coming. Mwana wa ahadi anakuja. So let us wait upon the Lord. Ivo acha tusalie kumngoja Bwana. Remain faithful to your marriage. Salia mwaminifu kwa ndoa yako. Pray together with your husband. Omba na mme wako. And I believe that God is able to answer your prayer. Na ninaaminia sana kwamba Mungu ana uwezo wa kujibu maombi yako. He's going to bless the womb. Na naenda kubariki tumbo lako. You're going to conceive. Na unaenda kupata ujauzito. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. Naamini ya kwamba unabarikiwa and you are so encouraged in the Lord. All things work for good to them that love the Lord and them that are called according to his purpose. So I believe that your calling is very unique. Your calling is very unique. It is according to the purpose of God. So do not Look unto yourself and compare yourself with somebody else. You are a different person. You are a vessel that God wants to glorify himself in you. Give him chance. Let him glorify himself in you. And glory and honor shall go back to God. Hallelujah. Tunaendelea watu wanahitaji Mungu akaweze kuaguza. Tuko na dada mwingine pia anasema ya kwamba angetamani Mungu ambariki na mme. Nimesikia mtumishi wa Mungu akisema remain faithful to your marriage. But huyu anasema ya kwamba now I'm crying for that marriage. I need God to remember me. Na ninatamani ndoa. Nimejaribu ndoa kuna wala ambao wanajua kwamba labda wamejaribu ndoa na zika fail katika maisha yao. Na mwingine hajawahi ingia katika ndoa kabisa. Maana naona hapa yule ameandikia kwamba anataka Mungu ambariki na mme wa maisha yake. Wenda kuna uwezekano aliwahi pata mme ambaye si wa maisha yake ama hajawahi pata mme kabisa na angetamani pia yeye ya kwamba apate mme katika maisha yake ili akaweze kufurahia Mungu akaweze kumkumbuka Sema jambo mtumishi wa Mungu kabla tusonge kwa sababu ya masa Another thing that I want to say about uh, somebody who is looking for a partner Yes Jambo lingine ninalotaka kusema kwa mtu hasa anayetafuta mwenzake God knows the right man and the right woman Mungu anamfahamu mwanaume halisi na mwanamke halisi But the danger of this problem is Lakini hatari ya shida hii ni There will be a lot of counterfeit Kutakuwa na wale watakao kuja ambao si wa kweli The people who comes and you think they are Mr. Right and they are not Mr. Right Ah watu wanaokuja na wanafikiria hawa ndio mabwana wa kweli lakini si wale wa kweli Commit yourself into prayer Jiweke mwenyewe kwa maombi. Seek God to give you the guidance. Tafute Bwana kupatie mwelekeo. And God is going to connect you with the right person. Naye Mungu anaenda kukuunganisha na mtu aliye sawa kwa ajili yako. The one whom he prepared for you. Yule ambaye alitayarishwa kwa ajili yako. At times it is difficult to know. Na wakati mwingine ni vigumu sana kujua. But when you are walking under the will of God when it, it comes to happen you will just know. Lakini unapotembea kwa mapenzi ya Mungu inapokuja kutimia utapata tu fahamu. Because there will be that divine connection in the spirit. Maana kutakuwa na ule muunganiko wa kiungu katika ulimwengu wa kiroho. There will be that awareness inside your heart. Kutakuwa na ule ufahamu ndani ya moyo wako. Na kupitia hiyo the Lord is going to make it work. Bana na So continue to pray. 
Kwa hivyo endelea kuomba. Don't mix yourself. Usijichanganye. Don't try here and try there. Usijaribu hapa na kisha pia ujaribu pale. Because during that time most of the people mess. Maana katika huo muda wengi sana upoteza mwelekeo. When you are single a lot of things come your way. Unapokuwa na ule upweke mambo mengi hutokea katika maeneo yako. But I tend to believe that is the time God is working upon your character so that you can be able to live with another person. Ah, na nataka kuamini kwamba hapo ndipo Mungu anajaribu kuangalia tabia yako inayoweza kuwezesha kuishi na mtu mwingine. So we are going to pray that God may bring a divine connection with your partner. Ah, tunaenda kuomba kwamba Mungu alete muunganiko wa kiungu katikati yako na mwenzio. If there is anything that the enemy has been planning to bring us a distraction may the Lord defeat it. Kama kuna kitu chochote ambacho shetani ama adui amekuwa analeta kama kizu zi basi tunaenda kukishinda and i believe god is able to give you the right person. na naamini kwamba mungu anaenda kukupatia mtu aliye bora kwa ajili yako that is what i can say because of time na hiyo ndio naweza kusema kwa sababu ya muda amen amen kwa hivyo kufikia pale ninajua kwamba wengi mumetuma maombi yenu na vile nimekuambia kwamba tumekuwa tukiombea mahitaji haya kuanzia asubuhi haya tunajaribu ni kuguzia tu lakini tumekuwa tukiomba kwenye nyumba hii kuanzia asubuhi kufikia wakati huu na naamini ya kwamba Mungu amepata kuguza hitaji lako wala ambao wanaomba ya kwamba wanaanza biashara penola unasema unataka ku, unafanya biashara ama ni biashara ya wako unaomba financial breakthrough katika hiyo biashara kuna huyu Emilia Bisaya anasema nataka destiny help us Mary Mtiso unaomba uponyaji hausikii vyema. Juliana Maria jitumeguzia. Lilian anasema prophetic gifts. Fruit of the womb pia nimeguzia about sickness. Ugonjwa. Mdeu unasema unaomba protection. God's favor kutoka kwa dada yetu kabariki. Kabarika unasema unataka kibali cha Mwenyezi Mungu katika maisha yako na wengi kabisa sijaweza kuandika yote bali Mungu lakini kwa kuomba tumekuwa tukiombea mahitaji yote na naamini ya kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu atawatendea jioni ya leo kwa hivyo nataka kuchukua nafasi hii ili tukaweze kuomba tutaomba sisi zote tutaanza na mtumishi wa Mungu Johnston ataomba na aguzie baadhi ya hayo mahitaji ambayo nimesema na tutakuja kwa mtumishi wa Mungu kisha nitakamilisha kwa neno la shukurani na Mungu wa mbinguni apate kuwajibia na naamini ya kwamba kufikia mwisho wait for your testimony you are going to testify i am certain sure that you are going to testify there is a testimony awaiting for you alive in Jesus name. Karibu sana mtumishi wa Mungu. Yeah. Unganika nami tunapoomba Baba kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Asante Bwana uliyemwaminifu. Jioni ya leo Bwana umesababisha uwepo wetu hapa pamoja na mtazamaji wetu anayetufuata katika mitandao hizi. Yeyote ambaye amekuwa na tamanio Bwana katika ambaye ambaye ametusikiza na Bwana yuko na matamanio Tunaomba ukutanike na matamanio yake jioni ya leo. Tunasimama kinyume na kila vizuizi ambavyo vinaweza kuzuia muujiza wa mtu wa kupata uponyaji jioni ya leo. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo zikapate kuvunjika. Bwana tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya hawa ambao wanataka watoto. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya wale ambao wanasema kwamba wametamani tumbo zao pia zikaweze kulea. Tunaamini watoto wanatoka kwako. Tunatangaza tumbo zao kufunguka jioni ya leo katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Hapana kuchelewa tena. Muda kama huu mwaka unaokuja kuna mtu atakuwa na shuhuda atatafuta mchungaji Mary Nyokonyo ni katika jina la Yesu tunaachilia hiyo neema juu yake katika jina la Yesu Kristo yule ambaye anasema jioni ya leo ya kwamba anatafuta mme tunaamini wanaume wanatoka kwako bwana tunatangaza kufanyika kwa hiyo 
katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Asante kwa sababu ya wale wanataka financial breakthrough. We declare this morning and, 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 and this evening Jehovah Lord ya kwamba it is done in the name of Jesus. It is done in their lives in the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu tunakushukuru maana fedha na dhahabu ni zako. Hivyo jioni ya leo tunaachilia neema ya fedha. Tunaachilia hiyo kibali ya fedha kwa maisha ya watasamaji wetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Na hata kama kuna mtu katikati yetu ambaye yuko pamoja nasi katika vituo hivi, Bwana tunatangaza na yeye akutanike na huu muujiza wa kifedha katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Asante Bwana wa majeshi kwa mapigo yako tumepona. Wasikizaji wetu wamepona. Wanao tutisama wamepona. Watakao tufuata baadaye tunapomaliza bwana na wao watapokea upo nyaji hii neema iendelee kuwafikia wote watakao fungua ukurasa huu na kuunganika pamoja nasi hata tutakapokuwa tumemaliza ni kwa jina la Yesu tunaomba na hata kuamini amen father in the name of jesus you are the lord who changes not you are the alpha and omega receive all the glory lord for what you are doing Lord, we are gathered in your presence as we bring these needs before thee. Father, how I pray that you are hearkening to our prayer. How I pray that the life of somebody is being transformed. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jehovah Lord, I call upon you. The Lord of Moses, the Lord of Abraham, the Lord of Benjamin, the Lord of Israel. Have your way, my Father and my Redeemer. The people that are desiring to have businesses, oh Lord, I declare the breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak that my Father, you are releasing the breakthrough of finance. Let the heaven be open that they may receive from you and that whatever they begin, Lord, it shall be a blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I speak the divine favor upon that business now. I speak divine connection upon that business now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I declare victory upon those people who are feel to be oppressed, that wherever they are watching right now, Lord, I declare the Spirit of God to deliver them from that oppression, yes. to deliver them from that sickness. Every power of witchcraft, every power of sorceries, every demonic influence upon their life, I want to scatter that plan. I want to destroy that foundation. I bring it to nothing now. Satan, I command you, lose that business now. Lose that family now. Lose that body now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the people that are feeling pain all over their body, I declare healing right now. I release healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that wherever they are, they are receiving divine healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, how I pray, you are protecting their life. You are protecting their children. You are protecting their family. You are protecting their churches. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray, even those people that are looking for divine destiny helper, Lord, wherever they are, I pray that may you connect them. Connect them with their destiny helper. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever they have been looking for, Lord, may it bring forth the result. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray that there will be a lot of freedom in the, in the life of your people. The people who have been crying. My father wipe their tears. The people who have been rejected. I pray for that acceptance. The people who have been. Uh, who, are, who are chased away. From their marriages. From their families. Lord I pray for the restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray against the spirit of premature death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those whom the devil has planned to kill. I want to stop you the devil. You are defeated by the blood of Jesus. I declare the blood of Jesus upon their life, upon their families in the name of Jesus Christ. Father have your way. Make this to happen Lord for your own glory. We thank you so much for Lord you are with us. May your will be done King of King and the Lord of Lord. In Jesus mighty name I do pray and believe. Amen. 
Everlasting Father, Everlasting God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, how we are before your presence, Lord. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, our Redeemer. Thank you, Destiny Changer. Thank you, Miracle Worker. For you have done it again. You have done it again. Into our lives, oh God. You have changed our destinies. You have, oh God, healed our lives. We have brought, you have brought us, oh my Father. Oh my God, to your provision. We thank you, Jehovah. We bless your holy name. For you are our God. None like you, Jehovah. Beside you, we have no other help. How we glorify you. How we desire God to dwell in your presence each and every day of our lives. Oh, my Father, we thank you. Asante mtakatifu. E mungu wa Israeli. Rakatabo shente rebo zaya. Rikanta laba seke yabo yente lama zika. Horaba shanta lama ma. Baba tunakushukuru kwa ukuu wako mwenye huruma mwenye rehema mwenye neema uliyejaa nguvu uliyejaa baraka tele nani kama wewe baba eri katabo shendere bozai tulionekana kana kwamba tumesahaulika tukajiangalia tukaona sisi si kitu walipotucheka maadui tukakubaliana nao Tukainama baba katika kucheka kwao. Eh, hey, ana kasema you are the lifter of my horn. You are the lifter of my head. For thou O oh God, you are all oh my father for glory. You are for glory and you are the lifter of our heads. You have lifted us again God. Eh, hey, mtakatifu wa majeshi. Mfalme wa wafalme. Anayependa umbaji wake aliyekubali akapeana maisha yake kwa ajili ya rafiki zake nani kama wewe Mungu nani kama wewe Jehova nani kama wewe Bwana nani angeweza kupeana maisha yake kwa ajili yetu e Mungu ukaondoa aibu yetu ukabeba masikitiko yetu ukayagongomea kwenye msalaba ukiashangilia kwa ujasiri mashtaka yaliyokuwa yameandikwa kinyume na maisha yetu baba ukayaondoa ukatupatia kibali cha kuwa karibu na Mungu wetu tunasema ni asante baba maana jioni ya leo umezalisha tasa baba baada ya hii siku baada ya ana kuombele zako na akakuomba na akafanya nadhiri yako mtakatifu Mungu wa majeshi neno lako lasema alipoondoka alipoondoka baba alikutana na mme wake elikana na kwa wakati wako Mungu haukuwa wakati wa ana haukuwa wakati wa elikana unasema kwa wakati mwafaka uliofaa Mungu ulimbariki na akapata mwana Samueli na akamuita jina ya kwamba nilimtafuta kutoka kwa Bwana nasema ni asante maana hiyo biashara itaitanishwa na wewe hicho kibali kitaitanishwa na wewe hayo maisha yataitanishwa na wewe mtu atasimama na aseme nilimtafuta Mungu aliyenipatia hili nililo nalo asante Mungu wetu remove the spirit of rejection Remove the spirit of rejection. Ondoa roho wa kukataliwa. Give us the spirit of favor, Lord. Whatever we touch, my Father, may your provision be seen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jehovah. We are waiting for your testimony, for we know that God, a time is coming we are going to testify about your goodness, Jehovah, in the land of the 